I mean, will we still need humans? Uh, not for most things. Uh... So that was Bill Gates when questioned about whether or not you actually will need humans in the future. And I think on face value, what he's saying is often quite terrifying, consider the economic implications of that. And the fact that many individuals, including myself, are quite uncertain about the future. So in this video, I'm going to give you guys a deep dive on what the industry is actually saying about AI, the economy and jobs. And of course, I'm going to kickstart it with Bill Gates's recent statement on jobs. The era that we're just starting is that intelligence is rare, you know, a great doctor, a great teacher. And with AI uh, over the next decade, that will become free, commonplace, you know, great medical advice, great tutoring. And it's kind of profound because it solves all these specific problems. Like we don't have enough doctors or, you know, mental health professionals, uh, but it brings with it kind of so much change you know, what will jobs be like? Should we, you know, just work like two or three days a week? Uh, so I, I love the way it'll drive innovation forward, but I think, you know, it's a little bit unknown. Yeah. Will we be able to shape it? Uh, and so legitimately, people are like, wow, this is, this is a bit scary. It's completely new territory. So now this is where Bill Gates actually says that it is very profound and even a little bit scary because it is happening very, very quickly and there is no upper bound. I think what he's saying here is really important. You know, the fact that there is no upper bound means that there is nothing that AI won't be able to do. I've seen a lot of trends recently where people are saying that, look, haha, your job is gone, stop coping. But I think we all have to understand that even down to being your boyfriend or girlfriend or your partner, like there's literally nothing that AI won't be able to do provided we have embodied intelligence sometime in the future. And we do know that that is a thing that companies are working on. Of course, some things will remain uniquely human, but for the most part, there being no upper bound is probably an accurate statement considering the fact that this thing's gonna be smarter than us, faster than us, more emotionally intelligent, and just bounds ahead of any average human, which means the human intelligence is probably going to be, you know, a declining asset in the coming future. Now, of course, he is not the only person that has ushered such a statement. One of the things that we've seen is the fact that these tools will only temporarily augment human intelligence. Suleiman wrote in his book, The Coming Wave, which was published in 2023, that they will make us smarter and more efficient for a time and will unlock enormous amounts of economic growth, but they are fundamentally labor replacing. So the reason like why I included that statement is because I think there is maybe not a disconnect, but there is somewhat of an argument between two sides. And the argument, well, not argument, but kind of disagreement that I'm seeing here is that some people say that, you know, we have essentially labor shortages. So the reason that we are building robots and the reason that we are building this AI is because we really don't have enough, you know, doctors and, you know, robots and engineers and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, on, on some aspect, we do have to look at the fact that this is a labor replacing tool, meaning that across the board, whilst yes, there may be shortages somewhere in the majority of areas, there are actually going to be areas where it replaces individuals at their jobs, which is, of course, something that a lot of people don't want. Now, of course, if we're talking about, you know, the, you know, economic anxiety, what, what people are talking about, I want to show you guys this clip from Tristan Harris on AI. And, you know, this conversation was, you know, mainly about safety, but I want to show you guys this because he's right about the fact that there's going to be a lot of economic anxiety. And it's something that, you know, we can't just thrust society into, especially when these tools are rapidly deployed. And later on in the video, I'll talk about a recent tool that was deployed that is really showing people just how crazy things are going to get. We're about to disrupt millions of jobs without people having a new alternate economic future. That's going to create so much economic anxiety that we can't just roll out AI and destabilize society and overwhelm society. Right now, the logic is if I don't race to deploy AI faster than the other companies or countries, then my country will lose. That's why we're not regulating AI because we have to beat China. But if you, it, that's the wrong logic. The logic is if I'm not as good at harnessing and mitigating the risks of AI, then I'm gonna lose to the countries that are better at mitigating the risks of AI. So instead of it's a race to deploy the technology, it's a race for who's better at governing the technology in a way that doesn't self-undermine 
you're welcome. Now, Sam Altman also spoke about this. He basically just said that this is what's next. And I think the one thing that I've seen across the board from a lot of these tech leaders, a lot of them, I don't want to say they're not being honest or genuine, but I think everyone is so uncertain about the future that the only thing that they can say is that there will be new jobs and we don't know what those jobs are going to be. I mean, that's what Sam Altman is saying. But one question I do have to ask is, you know, what are these potential jobs and roles that people and individuals are going to be doing? Because oftentimes there isn't really an answer. So eventually, uh, I think the whole economy transforms. We'll find new things to do. I have no worry about that. We will, we always find new jobs, even though every time we stare down a new technology, we assume they're all going to go away. It's true that some jobs go away, but we find so many new things to do. And hopefully so many better things to do. So I think what's going to happen is this is just the next step in a long unfolding exponential curve of technological progress. And this is where Bill Gates actually talks about the fact that, you know, jobs aren't even supposed to be done. He talks about the fact that humans aren't really made to work. And I think this one is kind of interesting because this is probably the only perspective I've ever heard where I've heard someone talk about the fact that humans aren't made to be, you know, working hours and hours, you know, every single week. We're just made to, you know, exist. And I mean, I don't really want to ponder human existence, but he talks about the fact that humans aren't intrinsically made to do jobs. We only do jobs because we need people to do things to keep the world running. And I guess He's kind of right about that. We weren't born to do jobs. Jobs are a, a, an artifact of the shortage that, oh gosh, you know, somebody better be a farmer. Okay, somebody better, you know, drive those trucks around. All of that is based on, you know, creating the human intelligence to uh, provide a, a broad range of services. And so as you get away from that being a necessary thing, you get a lot more leisure time. And it'll be people who've grown up in that world of, uh, of no shortage who will have to think through. Uh, I think it's hard for anybody, you know, in my case, spent 70 years in the world of you know, shortages. It's hard to reprogram your brain to uh, you know, this, this change. Society will be able to have a level of output, you know, food, medical advice, that doesn't, won't require everybody to work like they do today. We'll have a choice. I mean, we can say that the machines shouldn't help with certain things. We can confine them to certain areas uh, if we choose to. But the, the reason you think about jobs is because of the shortages. It, it, even that framing of how you think about the world won't really be the way to think about it. Now, I don't want to just make this video and give you guys a bunch of fear, anxiety and doubt and worry because I think videos like that aren't helpful. Although, of course, there is a lot of questions in the air. You know, there are a lot of questions that are just floating around, like what are going to be the jobs? Which industry should I study for if I'm young? Which career do I go into? You know, there's a bunch of different things that, you know, people are, you know, asking. And of course, I don't have all the questions and neither do those at the companies. And one of the things that I would say at least provides some direction is the largest growing and declining jobs by 2030. This is a document by the WEF. I actually did, I think, around a 20 to 30 minute video on this, diving into the roles and the reasons that these ones are going up and some are going down. And I think it's rather important that you do pay attention to this or at least screenshot this, uh, maybe send it to your friends and family so that, you know, you're not out of place because the last thing you want to do is be the person who is at the end in terms of like being the last person to realize that, oh, my industry went away. Like, for example, you wouldn't want to be the last person to realize that the internet is a thing and, you know, you're still mailing, you know, uh, leaflets or whatever, trying to advertise your business. Ideally, you'd want to get into online advertising as early as possible. So, you know, we can see a lot of jobs that are growing. You've got like, you know, delivery drivers, software developers. I know that there's a lot of, you know, um, you know, comments online about software developers being done, but I do think that the role of software developers is going to increase because software becomes more easily accessible. A lot of average people start building software and you need more software developers to actually fix that software when it, you know, goes wrong. And we're seeing that a lot of, you know, tradesmen and stuff, those ones are increasing. We can see, you know, social work, project managers, university teachers, secondary school teachers, personal care aides. I mean, a lot of this stuff does make sense. A lot of these roles are the ones where AI just won't help and, you know, individuals are going to be performing a lot of the tasks here 
um, and a lot of the declining jobs. And I actually want to point out one of them, which I personally believed was gone in around 2024 because I was doing this thing where I tracked every single job. I know it's like pretty crazy to track every single job, but I had a lot of anxiety regarding many you know, fields and I just wanted to stay ahead. And one of the jobs that I, I, I just knew was going to go really early and maybe, you know, there's still places hiring now because of course, you know, you might need a graphic designer at some of those top tier companies. Like a lot of these roles, if you're in the top 1%, you still, you're still probably going to have a role because, you know, like those big companies that can afford large salaries are probably always going to want a human to oversee it and ensure that the AI knows what it's doing. But the reason I want to show you guys this one, okay, is because graphic designers comes down at number 13 and you know, at number 13, that is, uh, you know, it's not high, but at the same time, what did we see recently? Okay. Recently we saw a chat GPT and I wanted to show you guys this video from TikTok. Now I don't usually include tips from TikTok, but the only reason I'm doing this is because oftentimes AI only breaches into the mainstream when it becomes abundantly clear that AI is easy to use and the capabilities are better than what currently exists. And when you realize that, okay, the average person can now prompt you know, their graphic design into existence with consistent characters. And this is the worst it will ever be at this moment in time. We have to think about what that means for the future. And when I'm seeing, you know, you know, like people are sending me these TikToks, it's like, okay, that should be a moment for you to understand that if the average person can do this, then what does the, you know, um, actual graphic designer, you know, is, is able to do? Or what if they want to outsource this to a team that costs as half as much as your current salary? And I do remember even watching a video where someone was like, I'm a graphic designer and I've just been replaced by AI. So take a look at this and why it's pretty crazy. AI is going to completely replace graphic designers within a year. I asked ChatGPT to make some images using my hat, Fragile Collective, and look at what it came up with. We got the morning routine guy, Ashton Hall, wearing the Fragile Collective hat. We have an insanely fire Instagram photo that I could use as a paid ad probably right now. We got my hat with a snake wrapped around it. Someone sent me this one, fire. Someone sent me my hat on a cartoon T-Rex. This could be a movie poster. This is absolutely fire. And my friend Brendan put my hat into this absolutely fire ad creative that I could use on Instagram right now. AI is getting way too advanced. If you can give it a photo of an object like a hat and say, put this on a movie poster with a dinosaur or with a snake wrapped around it. And the outputs are pretty damn good. Over the next year, this AI is going to get so scary that I think it completely replaces graphic designers. So what do you guys think about these AI tools? You guys think that this is, of course, something that was, you know, inevitable. Do you think that these jobs are all going to be replaced? Or do you think that, you know, we're just, you know, entering a new economic paradigm? I definitely think that it's a very strange time. Like I said, I would definitely, you know, whatever industry you're in, I would definitely pay attention to whatever tools are becoming, you know, state of the art in your area. For example, if I was a writer, I'd pay attention to all of the writing tools so I'm able to stay up to date. Or potentially, I would even, you know, try and pivot to something that's less automatable. You know, for example, the the one that I give is that, you know, maybe if you're a graphic designer, maybe communicate to maybe try and pivot. And I'm not saying this is, you know, a complete solution, but try and pivot to something adjacent that isn't as automatable. Maybe thinking about the strategy behind designs or maybe like doing the research behind certain campaigns with real data, something that, you know, the AIs probably might struggle with. And I think you'd have a better chance at that rather than just trying to beat the AI than, you know, what it already is good at. So with that being said, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video and I provided you with some value. And let me go and let me know what you guys think about this because of course it is something that is of concern to quite a lot of people.